So recently in the mail, I received two letters directly towards me from the FAA, and in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you what are inside of these. Psh, I was just messing with you there, that was being overly dramatic. These are actually good letters that I just received in the mail recently, and they are from the FAA, but they are good, they're nothing bad. They are uh, my actual Part 107 license that just came in, like the actual plastic card. So I'm really happy, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you that, and I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about the process of getting the Part 107 and what it even is, answering some of you guys' questions. And along with that, I'm going to be showing you how I registered my... Phantom 3 standard over there because my most recent video. In that video, I flew my drone. This one, this was the first time that I was flying that one as a commercial drone pilot. So I had to register that before flying it. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the part 107 and the also the process of actually registering a drone under a commercial license. So anyways, before getting any further into the video, let's actually open up these letters and I'll show you what is inside of them. All right, so before actually opening these up, I just wanted to explain in simplest terms really quickly, what even is part 107? Because in my last video, I actually didn't really say what it was. So in the simplest of terms, in the United States, you need to have a part 107 license if you are flying commercially. So commercially, as defined by the FAA, is if you are in furtherance of a business. So that would be if you are a realtor and you're using the footage or photos to sell homes, or if you're a YouTuber and you're monetizing your videos, or if you are selling your footage to a stock image website and you're making money from that. Really, the list just continues going on. So if that sounds like anything that you do, then you will need to get a Part 107 pilot's license in order to legally fly under FAA regulations and actually fly a drone and make money with that. So I took my test about two months ago now, back in January, and I am just now receiving my actual certificate in the mail, so that's what these are. The first envelope that I opened up was this one right here, and what is in this envelope is actually the pilot's license. So once you receive yours, this is what it will look like, of course not blurred, but <laughs> you will receive this, and then when you open it up, you will be granted with your actual certificate. So the certificate looks really awesome actually. I love the green and blue. But in this, it's really just the actual certificate and then it explains uh, a couple things such as replacement. If you lose your actual certificate, if there's an error or something like that, the time that you need to have it noted and other stuff that doesn't need to be talked about. But the main point of this letter is the fact that it came with this actual certificate. So second up in this envelope that I received is this one is about address releasability. So what this is, is back in 2000, the Wendell L. Ford Aviation Investment and Reform Act was released on April 5th of 2000. And what this does is it basically means that the FAA has to release your address to the public unless you state otherwise. So with this letter, you can return it back and decide to opt out of releasing your address to the public, which I personally did. So with this, you can send back this paper and return it that way, but you can also go and do this online, which I'm gonna be showing you how I did a little bit later in this video, but this is the second paper that I received in the mail. Okay, so now that these are both opened, let's actually get to a couple frequently asked questions. So now I asked you guys about a week ago to ask me some questions on Twitter but I only received one question, and that being, how do you get it? So if you're wondering how I get it, uh, watch this video up here. Now this video is basically just a continuation of that, how I actually received this. So once you actually pass the test, so if you pass the test, you will get a paper that looks literally probably exactly like this. And once you receive that, you're gonna have to go to iacra.faa.gov and you're gonna have to create an account there and do a lot of different sign up and stuff. I'd suggest highly, seriously, checking out the Remote Pilot 101 course. They have an entire video, I think it's like 13 minutes long and it shows the entire process of going through the IACRA website and stuff like that. And after that, within a week, you should receive your temporary ID, which I folded up because I'm tired of blurring stuff. But anyways, after you receive that, then you are free to fly as a remote pilot. But of course, you need to make sure that you have your drones registered as a commercial drone. So if you ever crash or something like that, then 
it is known to be your drone and it can be linked back to you. I'm gonna get to that a little bit later, but then after that, the next step is, it took about two months for this to come, then you are pretty much set to actually be a remote pilot. So considering I didn't get many questions from Twitter, only the one, I'm gonna go back to the last video that I did about the FAA part 107 test. I'm gonna be answering some questions from down in the comments. So do you need a FAA license in the UK? Uh, like I said, this is for the United States. So if you live outside of the United States, you do not need a part 107, but you may need some other form of registering your drone or actually getting a license to actually do commercial work in that country. So definitely make sure to look at your local laws and regulations to actually see if you need to do that or not. If you're not going to go into any type of drone business, is there any benefit to having the certificate? Are you able to fly in more areas than if you're just flying recreationally? Thanks and congrats. So that is actually a really good question. If you are not flying commercially in the United States and you're just flying for fun, then you do not need part 107. But if in any way you are ever selling your footage or uh, using your footage in furtherance of a business, then you need to make sure you get a part 107 or you could have some problems in the future with the FAA and stuff like that. But do you actually get more benefits when having part 107? So actually you do. So if you have a part 107, you actually have the ability to get authorizations into airspace or waivers to waiver from doing some things that usually you can't do when flying a drone such as like visual line of sight things, or maybe it's flying over a big group of people, you can waiver some of those things of part 107 sometimes when you actually have a part 107 license. Also another thing that I've seen in the past is questions about if you have a part 107, do you always have to fly as a commercial pilot? And the, the answer to that is absolutely not. If you want to just go out and have fun sometime and you just want to fly around as a hobbyist and you don't have any intent of selling your footage or anything like that, then absolutely you can fly as a hobbyist if you'd like. You don't have to fly under part 107 all the time. So that's one nice thing if you are wondering that. So now with address releaseability, let's go to the computer and let's show you how I did this. Okay, so now that we are to the computer, if you would like to choose to opt out of releasing your address to the public, then here is the website that I went to. Go to this website up here. I'll be leaving the link to this down in the description below so you don't actually have to type it all out from just seeing this, but it will say right down here, you can change your status right here online and it's like kind of hard to see but you can just open that right up and that will take you to this website right here so you'll get the notice saying that this is a government website of course so don't do something stupid but once you are here you're gonna actually have to go and if you haven't already created an account in the past you're gonna have to request an account and once you get here, you're gonna have to fill in your first name, middle name, last name, date of birth, the certificate number that is on your part 107 ID. And then you're also gonna have to add your email address and add a password. So once you do that, you will receive an email. Once I received that, I was able to go and log in. Once you actually log into this website, it's really quite basic. You will definitely see there will be an area where it will say change address releaseability. And once you are there, then you just click there and it will open up a new window, and within that window, it will say opt out of the address releaseability, or it will say release my address or whatever. And that basically means the first option means that you let the FAA release your address to the public. I personally am a little bit uncomfortable with, but for some people, um, if you have a business or something like that, it's probably fine with you. And the second one means to opt out means that your address will not be released. So uh, that is it for this. So if you don't want to do it this online method, of course, you can send in the actual letter. You can resend it back in. You can sign it. Do whatever with that. But since we are on the computer now anyways, let's switch back about a week when I filmed actually registering my Phantom 3 standard. So, Let's go back a little bit and you can see how I registered the actual drone. So let's go. Hey, so I'm figuring that I'm going to be including this in a future video. I'm not sure when I'm going to be making it, but I'm going to be registering my Phantom 3 standard. So in order to register a drone, FAA makes it quite simple. Just go to registermyuas.faa.gov 
And once you're actually here, if you have never created an account on this website, you're gonna have to go and actually create one. All you need to do is you need an email, a password, and then you need to be 13 years or older in order to register your drone. I've already created an account actually, so I'm just gonna log right in with my info that I already have. And then once you're here, it will bring up your dashboard. And what you're gonna have to do is go to manage my SUAS inventory. And from here, you can click on add UAS. So to add a UAS, it will just bring this up you select the type if it's home built or purchased which in this case I purchased it obviously it's DJI a nickname you can enter I'm gonna enter DJI Phantom 3 standard what an original name right manufacturer just put DJI if you have DJI or if you have some other drone manufacturer so the model is the DJI Phantom 3 standard man as long as I can type here then for serial number on the Phantom 3 standard it's not that difficult to find on this. It is located right here underneath the battery. So from there, you're just gonna type in that serial number. So then all you gotta do now that you have your serial number entered, just click add UAS and it has added it to cart. If you have numerous drones that you have to add at the same time, you can do that, but I'm done. So I'm gonna click on done. So as you can see, it has now added that Phantom 3 standard right here and it says that it is five dollars so now I just got to click on check out then just click on I've read understand and intend to follow the FAA requirements then next and then from here you're gonna have to enter your payment info for credit card and also your address and such so I'm just gonna skip this screen because I don't want to show credit card of course so once you are to review and pay it will say just to review your order and you have to click down here to say that then you click on pay. So as soon as you've clicked on pay, it will bring up this screen right here and it will say congratulations, you have registered your devices. And it just shows that you have to actually place this on your drone or device. So you can click done. And as soon as you've done that, you should be able to go to your email and immediately they should have sent you an email with your actual registration number for your drone. So here is the email that I actually received and at the bottom, it actually, it's pretty cool. It comes with this little card that you can print out to show that you have registered your drone. So this is all it looks like. It's pretty blank, but it looks kind of cool. It has your name, the manufacturer, the model, and of course the serial number and certificate number. When you register a drone, it is registered for three years, but after three years, you're gonna have to re-register your drones. But anyways, so now that I have that, I actually have the certificate number. I'm gonna go and copy and paste this number into this document that I have here. And this is just what I use to actually label my drone. So as you can see, I have one for the Platinum and I also have the one for the standard. So I'm gonna be placing that inside of this battery compartment and where the previous one was. Of course, when you actually have this, I would suggest adding a contact number and saying that you will offer up a reward. But anyways, now that this is done, let's get back to whatever video I was just shooting, so let's go. So anyways guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully it helped you out. Uh, maybe it answered your question or maybe it helped you with registering your drone if you didn't know how to do that prior. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys would like to see future videos, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see my last video, that should be up there. And the other FAA Part 107 video should be down there. But anyway, guys, that is it for this video. See you guys in the next one. Peace.